Hello everyone and Mr. Nemec is once again here with you. So today uh, I had the opportunity to play in the very strong and traditional tournament here in Croatia. We are talking about the 55th uh, Mio Judovicic Memorial Tournament which is dedicated to first Croatian Grandmaster. So it's a traditional New Year's uh, with tournament always played on the 2nd of January and uh, well the whole creme de la creme of Croatian chess uh, participates um, there are some rules Mo most of the grandmasters play uh, and six qualifiers uh, that qualified from the qualifying tournament and i was among these six spots and some players invited from the f by the officials of the tournament so yeah it's a really really nice uh, tournament really uh, well, great opportunity for me to play. Uh, so the lineup uh, consisted of, I think, 12 grandmasters, uh, seven international masters, uh, three FIDE masters, and the four candidate masters, among which was yours truly as well. So yeah, it was exceptionally strong tournament, and uh, yeah, you well, you basically fight for your life uh, during the entire time. So I, I mainly started the tournament uh, with the hope that I won't embarrass, embarrass myself and that I will collect some points. So yeah, in the end I did, uh, well, manage to to score 7 out of 25, which actually seems rather lousy, but believe me, at one point I thought I wouldn't be even, even collect that amount of points. So yeah, in the end I'm kind of satisfied and I also gained some rating. So yeah, the, re the result is not that terrible, it's more or less expected. But uh, once again, as in the previous video, I missed whole amount of chances. Yeah, and I had a couple of grandmasters on ropes, and uh, yeah, in the end, well, there's not shooting chess, but judging by the positions, I really could have scored many, many more points, as we will see in this uh, video wrap up of the tournament. Okay, so. Already in the first round, I started. I, I, I was uh, very impressed. I was, you know, when you're playing these guys, you you always uh, believe them that they see something you don't. You know, you're double checking everything and you're waste, you're losing your time. Yeah. So here in this position, I, I'm playing against a Grandmaster Robert Robert Zelcic, and I'm I'm the black and I'm on the move. So well, there's actually the position is perfectly fine for black. It's um, around equal and some move like I don't know Queen C3. Or something like that, queen c7, uh, queen e7, preventing the move that happened in the game would be perfectly fine for black. But unfortunately, I, you, you don't, I don't know, I saw some ghosts and I played h5, and I, after bishop f7, I can resign immediately. There's no way to prevent the attack on g6 pawn, after which all my pawns fall, and yeah, there's nothing re I can re do really. Uh, and, and that's not only the problem, but I will also get mated after. The queen queen takes g6, queen h5, for instance, let's say some move, I don't know, king h8, king uh, queen takes g6, I'm also getting mated, so it's not, not just pawns, but also the king security that bothers me. So yeah, that was kind of, you know, scary entry, entry in the tournament, but okay, nothing terrible happened for the moment. Uh, you know, you're still playing the game. So yeah, after uh, uh, a respite draw in the second round, uh, Mr. Jovanovic really crushed me like a bug. So yeah, in the fourth round, I played the uh, former European champion, Croatian re legend, uh, Zdenko Kojo. And actually I sacrificed him correctly in the opening, but he failed to to, to refute the, the, the sacrifice. And here I played bishop takes b6. Okay, and so after, let's say, rook takes c1, which would be the best move, and I take on d8, and he takes, I take, and he takes, well, the position is approximately equal. Maybe black is still even slightly better. But, uh, yeah, what happened in the game? Actually, uh, Mr. Kojo played knight d8, which is actually a, a blunder. And, uh, well, uh, there is a complicated computer variation starting with, I mean, not that complicated with, at night, uh, rook takes c7 and queen c2, winning the clear piece back. But okay, I didn't do that. I chose queen a5. And after rook takes c1, the only move, bishop takes d8. Rook takes, bishop takes, and now knight c6, an intermediate move. Queen takes a6, knight takes d8. Uh, black has two pieces and rook for a queen. But I have two pawns and two connected post pawns. And by all standards, this position is winning for white. It, it, there's no denying uh, with, the, the pro with proper technique, white should win this position. 
Yeah, but okay, so I played b4, which is very logical. Bishop f6. I played bishop b3. I could have probably pushed a4, but that's not important. And here he played knight c7. I took on d6, and he played knight e8. And here, I, I, for for some reason, I played e5. And my reasoning was okay, he will play rook d8. I will take, he will take with the knight. And I will take his bishop, and okay, I'm probably not losing here. Although, even by itself, I, you know, I was nervous, but even if we enter this position, there is no need for white to go there from this position. But there is even bigger problem with e5, and that is, of course, when you take, he can take with the bishop, and then, yeah, one piece, you might survive, but two pieces down, you are completely losing. And yeah, so after I played queen c6, he took this pawn, and <coughs> I actually don't remember... Uh, the exact moves uh, during the remainder of the game, but you know, two knights really, really hurt me. There is this d5 juicy square, and yeah, I, I actually lost without much resistance later. The computer actually says the position is already equal. So yeah, that was kind of kind of unfortunate because you know here uh, virtually any other move like queen c6 or something, you know, you 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 retain this pawn structure and you're, you're you just need to be precise. But okay, what can you do? You know. There, when you're playing these guys. And the other thing was, when you're playing regular blitz, uh, you're not used to this level of resistance, you know? When when you're playing some someone, especially on the internet, you know, you, you play without thinking, you convert much more easily. And here, these guys, uh, they not only play stronger in equal or better positions, but also in worse positions, they complicate your winning task to a maximum extent, and that's something we can all run from. Yeah, okay, so uh, uh, in the sixth round, this was, uh, okay, this was the, the one missed opportunity. And then in the sixth round, I played against uh, Grandmaster Sasha Martinovic. He's uh, the one of the younger Grandmasters in Croatia, but okay. So yeah, this was the position, and I'm clearly, clearly better here. And I actually, I saw that I can sacrifice on G6 here. And I and I realized, okay, uh, if when I take... Uh, at least I will have a draw if nothing there, there, there's nothing better and here I had like a half a minute on the clock of course he can play King Gijet because I take on F7 and it's just uh, curtains so he has to play King F8 and after Queen C, uh, H6 King G8 I went on to repeat the move with uh, Queen G6 but actually I, I, I couldn't uh, Evaluate what is happening, but of course Queen E4, uh, Knight E4, and the computer says you are simply winning. Uh, Black doesn't have a single move here, you know, because if you take, then you take here and you open this rook, you open this rook, and it's it's pretty much all over. Uh, also, if he tries something like Bishop D7, you just go uh, Knight G5. And then even if knight, uh, bishop g7, if rook g7, then you have uh, knight e6. S uh, if he tries knight d7, then uh, probably apart from knight d6, there's probably also knight g5 once again, and once again knight e6. And yeah, it, it's impossible for for uh, black to hold this. But yeah, as as it is, instead of going for knight e4, I simply repeated moves and uh, yeah, well. I, Okay, they, I, at least I didn't lose this game, but still, uh, half a point opportunity was gone, and yeah, well, you don't get many opportuni opportunities in tournaments like this. Okay, so, okay, this, the, and the next, uh, after uh, ups and downs in the in the tournament, that actually I lost the, f f the next game as well against Urosh, so at that particular moment, I was at ha one point out of... Uh, Seven, which is you know kind of was kind of depressing, and I was already imagining imagining all kinds of fears. Uh, and here I played in the eighth round. I played against um, uh, Fide Master uh, Zov Komario, and uh, this was the position uh, we have reached. And here I missed elementary shot. I missed Bishop takes e seven, and of course uh, he can take with the king because knight b5 check and his queen is not queen is not defended so he he would lose his queen and this is just over more or less okay i, I missed that and i played a6 he played b6 i played rook fd1 he played knight f8 and here i played a hour i somehow played b4 and after knight d5 i also hallucinated i played knight d5 c takes d5 queen takes e7 king takes e7 and for some reason I thought, you know, that the typical hallucination that this 
rook is the bishop and I could take the bishop but unfortunately rules of chess don't work that way and here instead of some move like c3 which still leads to perfectly equal position I played another however I played bishop d4 and after bishop take rook take knight e6 I was the pawn on g f4 and after some adventures I I was yeah, yeah I, I, I was the game so yeah I was, you can imagine, I was pretty, pretty much depressed at this point. You know, not uh, <laughs> well, one out of eight is really, really not the the tournament start you you would expect. And yeah, I was, I, I wasn't playing that bad, but I was missing these these opportunities. This uh, I was overlooking tactics all over the place, and uh, I wasn't, uh, I wasn't particularly optimistic about my prospects in the future. But okay, I, I managed to compose myself a bit I got uh, the the draw paired me with a brown which Darko who had a very bad tournament himself so little by little you get gain some points here gain some points there and yeah well the tournament went all the way up to up to around uh, what's let me see it was round 18 and uh, I was playing black against uh, Grandmaster Rogish Dower and as you can see here, I'm completely winning. I have clear, three clear pawns up. And uh, yeah, well, this is one position by all standards. And he's back to play and I played rook to c6. And he played rook d8. I took, he took. And here, for some reason, uh, well, uh, black so white so trade in, in the position is connected with g5 and bishop f6. And yeah, a simple move like h6 would have prevented it. But okay, I didn't do that. I played a5, which is not that bad uh, in itself. And after uh, g5, h6, he played bishop f6 check. And here, yeah, well, I, I, I could have simply taken here. And yeah, with, uh, <laughs> I mean, with four pounds for the exchange, I'm, I'm easily winning. Yeah, but for some reason, you know, I went full full greed mode. And after king h7, rook a8. Uh, still, I I probably can just take on f6, which is or no no sorry I can take on g5 now, and after bishop g5, you know I can play uh, bishop d7 simply and yeah well there is no he can play bishop f6 because my rook is protecting the square and yeah I'm still technically winning, but for some reason I played a tempo uh, rook e6 and he played bishop h3 and suddenly I'm I'm almost losing, so now I have to give up the exchange in far inferior version. And after rook takes, uh, uh, g takes, bishop uh, c6, rook a7, bishop takes c4, rook takes x7, king g8. Here my opponent missed this very strong uh, rook g7 and if king f8, bishop a6. So he played rook a7 and I played bishop f5. And okay, this is uh, still equal, but somehow I managed to lose even this position and in the end, in the end I, I, I even lost this. So. Yeah, that was that was really really a shocking game or a terrible game for me because yeah I, I to this day I don't understand what on earth I was playing and how I didn't see all these things which were rather rather simple. But okay, yeah, what can you do? So yeah, that was uh, that was that game. Uh, so two rounds later, I had white pieces against uh, one of the strongest Croatian grandmasters and. Uh, a real well virtuoso in the uh, technical virtuoso Grandmaster Stevich, and I actually managed to outplay him uh, from a technical position, which is really not uh, typical for me. And here, oh well, yeah, I don't know. I, it, it is white right to move up, obviously, because he's attacking my rook. And after, let's say, rook b6, rook c8, rook a6, I'll collect a pawn. Okay, for some reason I didn't do that. I went rook b3. He played h6. I took. He took. Here I played knight e4, uh, seeking to exchange uh, knights. He complied. He played rook a4, attacking the c4 pawn. I played push c5. And here he pu pu pushed f6, preventing my king from uh, going e5. But that's not the only uh, point of the move f6, but black actually has a hidden threat that, of course, I completely failed to see. So I played some. Uh, white should of course play f4 here, uh, which not only prevents the trade but also introduces uh, rook h3 ideas. And actually, when I played my next move f3, I thought, oh my god, why did I block my rook? And still, I missed uh, black's threat, which is e5. And here, uh, well, I'm not sure what happens after say rook d3. 
I haven't analyzed that, but I played king f f5, which can be bad. And he took with the pawn. And here I took on f6. And he played rook c4, attacking my c5 point. And of course, if white, uh, white I played king, uh, king e6 here, he played king f8. And of course, if white can, white wants to draw here, I can simply repeat. And I'm not sure whether he can avoid this uh, per, uh, with, with this attack with my king. But okay, I somehow, I, I wasn't yet, yet thinking about draw. I thought I was slightly better here. And I played king to d6 here. Uh, he played rook c3. I played rook to before and here actually black can draw with uh, rook f3 which is the best move but okay i will leave that to rook and game experts but he pushed the d3 and uh, the best move for white here is rook d4 immediately keeping this pawn under surveillance and he can't uh, play what he did in the game but yeah as in my end game technique i played rook uh, king takes c6 he played rook c2 I played rook d4 now, which is too late, and he played d2. And here, actually white is white has to fight for a draw, or he has to be careful. He, the best play for white is king b5, and if he takes king b4, uh, eyeing this a3 pawn, uh, which might become dangerous. And let's say after rook c2, king takes, rook takes, king takes, this is a dead draw endgame. And this should be a fair result here. But yeah, for some reason, I still thought I was playing for a win and I play king d6. And after rook takes a2, this uh, c6, rook to c2, c7, a2. I'm lost here and I, okay, I even blundered here rook to uh, d2 because when he takes, he takes with the check. But as it is, this position is losing because the, the, the two post pawns are stronger than one. But yeah, still, it beats me when you consider this position where white is in complete control. If he plays f4, I suddenly, yeah, I, I, I still find it kind of amazing that I managed to lose this. But what can you do? Yeah, and here, this is the last round of the tournament. I am playing, uh, I think, the Croatian champion from last year, Aloysia Jankovic. Uh, and actually, yeah, I, I played the... the Smirn of Gambit uh, before in the Sicilian here, and yeah, he, he defended quite well, he, he played very accurately, and uh, yeah, uh, at what point he, he, I was clear two pawns down, and here he decided to sacrifice a piece, and he actually had a winning attack. But he has to be precise, which is not easy in Blitz. Uh, the, here the strongest move is rook g6, and after say, something, some adventures like queen d5, bishop c7, it is not at, at all that clear. How, well, black is not directly winning, he has some long-term compensation, let's say. But here he played, uh, he played rook e6, and I played rook f3, he play, gave me check, I played king f1, and here he played bishop g3, uh, threatening rook e1 mate. But the problem is, yeah, the, out here I was very low on time, my time was running out, and yeah, I first uh, seek, uh, to try to find a way how to how to deal with this threat, and then I said, okay, I'm going to sacrifice an exchange, rook g3. And by doing so, I realized that my queen is also defending <laughs> the g3 pawn, that actually my opponent has wandered a piece, and that I'm clearly winning here. But just as I took on g3, uh, my flag fell, and yeah, I lost the game. So yeah, uh, this was actually the first big present I I got in, in this tournament, and even uh, even when the opportunity arose, I failed to exploit it because I was too slow and I didn't see something so elementary as double attack on the piece. So yeah, when you add this all this up, well yeah, okay, at least five five and a half points more, judging purely by the positions. And not by the play could he, I could have reached. I also lost uh, a dead equal endgame against Switan. And yeah, well, okay, some opponents uh, thoroughly outplayed me. But yeah, I think, uh, I mean, it was a great experience. And uh, yeah, I hope to do better next year if I qualify at all. But yeah, there is some uh, some, some small regret that I, I hadn't, um, hadn't uh, fully exploited all the chances I got and yeah capitalized on my actually ra rather decent play especially when I when I analyzed the games with the engines yeah my I was playing really really good but yeah at the critical moment I was either missing things or probably giving them a bit too much respect
but okay it is for it is uh, now hope you enjoy this video and yeah hope you 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 won't respect anyone but yourself when you're playing i mean i play against the pieces and Grigorich says is the best the best uh, advice you can take from this video okay so once again uh, enough shit coming out of my mouth uh, see you some other time bye guys